Aloha everyone and welcome to SBA America where we focus primarily on small businesses in Hawaii. Thanks for joining us again today. We have some interesting things going on and a super guest who I think you'll really enjoy hearing from, learning a little bit more about his business and what, his, what he thinks about the big picture, how he got to uh, run this amazing small business in such a short period of time. Um, we're welcoming uh, Raymond Jardine today. He's the CEO for Native Hawaiian Veterans, uh, quite an accomplished firm in 11 years. Um, Ray is an encore entrepreneur himself. Uh, he helped the SBA out this past weekend with our presentation that we conduct for people who have perhaps left a career, uh, left a job, and are looking at becoming an entrepreneur after the age of 50. So he shared with us some of his experiences, and we'll talk a little bit more about that today. But first, I just wanted to let you know about a couple of other things that are coming up in our neighborhood to help small businesses. One is next week on the 23rd, and it's called our Regulatory Enforcement Fairness Roundtable. SBA will be bringing in people from the National Ombudsman's Office to talk to you, small business owners and other community leaders, about how small business regulations from federal agencies actually affect your small business. If you've got something that's really been giving you a problem or you see a better solution to something that a federal agency has required a small business or asked a small business to do, please join us at uh, the HDO, Hawaii District Office for the SBA, and that's at 9.30 to 11. You can call my office at 541-2990 for more inf information, or you could go to sba.gov and look up our ombudsman's office, and they can give you some direct information. It'll be a great event, a lot to talk about, and looking for more solutions for small businesses. We also have the Native Hawaiian Organization Business Summit coming up on August 24, 23rd and, no, 24th and 25th, 25th. excuse mm -hmm. me. And that'll be at the Prince Hotel. You can go to nhoassociation.org um, to find out more information. There'll be leaders from DOD and SBA officials to talk about how some of our government contracting programs work to help uh, the economic development of our Native Hawaiian community. There'll be a lot to talk about. We'll be talking about new government contracts and new things that have come up recently in the rules and regulations on the FAR that will help small businesses get a bigger big piece of government work. So that leads a great segue to introducing Ray and talking what, about how he got Native Hawaiian veterans started and how they experienced such phenomenal growth. Um, Ray, welcome to the program. Thank it's you. good to see you again. Um, I've known Ray for quite some time. Uh, Native Hawaiian Veterans is 11 years old now, but they've been growing at a pretty amazing clip. How do you account for that, Ray? Um, I think it's back with uh, when we first had the conception of starting the business. Mm -hmm. There was about three of us that we were talking about it. And it kind of started initially with a friend of mine, Mike Irish, who mm -hmm. is an entrepreneur. We went to high school together, uh, Kalani High School. And he talked to me when I got out of the military to start a business. Mm -hmm. So with that, I gave that a thought, met with a couple people, looked at the federal marketplace, mm -hmm. and then we started determining um, what type of programs we might want to get mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you had a long military career as mm -hmm. well. So you retired, and then it was, what do I do next? Yes, uh, 33 years with the military, and then uh, s a short period of time with the post office as their mm -hmm. senior emergency manager. And it, again, it was Mike Iris that kind of led me towards looking at entrepreneurship. Uh -huh. And when we looked into the program, initially we were looking at the Native 8A program. Mm -hmm. uh, when they, in 2004, they gave Native Hawaiians an opportunity to compete in that marketplace with Alaskan uh, Native corporations and uh, federal recognized tribes. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at that and started, it came on, went on the board of one of the NHO's um, Alakina Foundation. Mm -hmm. But at that same time, the president started an executive order giving disabled veterans an opportunity to do work in the federal marketplace. So I decided to do that disabled veteran program mm -hmm. where I gave disabled veterans 3% goal to go into federal work. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So that's how we kind of started the company. So the opportunity was right, and so mm -hmm. you could just kind of seize the day and go mm -hmm. after it. You had a background with IT primarily when you started. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, too, because um, sometimes you don't think that the local kids have mm -hmm. a very entrepreneurial mindset, but you're kind of a rascal, mm -hmm. huh? Um, <laughs> well, I spent a lot of time playing when mm -hmm. we were young and having mm -hmm. a good time doing that. And then when I graduated from high school and started to go to work and I didn't see uh, college in my in my career initially mm -hmm. and joined the military and then I realized that a continuous education was critical uh, mm -hmm. for any growth that you're going to have so started going to school getting educated uh, and then moved up the, the ladder in the military so when we got out had some skill sets already established that if I'm going to go into the federal marketplace some of the things I've done in the military actually transitions quite well over mm -hmm. to that. So we started initially as an IT emergency management company, and that kind of grew. Um, in fact, within two years, we were getting a lot of opportunities. In fact, one opportunity was a huge opportunity mm -hmm. with Siemens, a very large, large uh, government prime contractor, mm -hmm. on a contract to do um, security systems at embassies across the world. Mm -hmm. And we were one of three companies, small businesses at the time, that was um, brought on with Siemens to go after that work. And that's what helped us kind of take off. And since then, we've been doing work in 50 countries, I mean, correct, in 50 states, four territories, done work in 20 countries, currently mm -hmm. in six. So we've kind of expanded our horizon. Right. And you started with just a couple guys getting going, and you have grown and now... Mm -hmm couple hundred to over 200 mm -hmm. employees. Yeah, we have approximately 240 employees now and about 140 vacancies. Mm -hmm. Did you, was this part of your vision when you were getting started, when oh, you saw, no. okay, this is going to start no. up? And uh, we thought it was going to be a small business in Hawaii, you know, hopefully doing a couple million. And uh, next thing we know it, as we ex expanded our horizon, we just kept going mm -hmm. and going and going and to where we are today, which is uh, Hawaii's you know, the business of the year. Right. And um, uh, we came in second overall in the right. nation. I would be definitely <laughs> remiss not to point that out to you as well, that Ray is the 2016 mm -hmm. Small Business Person of the Year for the state of Hawaii. And with that, we sent him off to Washington to represent small businesses here in Hawaii, and he became second runner-up. Did you have any clue as you went into the ceremony that you were going to be honored for your accomplishments like that? Well, I knew her, I made the top 50 of uh -huh. four because <laughs> I wouldn't be there, mm -hmm. you know, so I represented Hawaii. Wasn't, I had no clue but that uh, we would be in the top you know, three in mm -hmm. the nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, uh, that award does specifically mm -hmm. look at somebody who's started a mm -hmm. company, been very entrepreneurial, has created jobs, generated revenue, um, overcome adversity, you know, as well. So I think, you know, mm -hmm. you, even in, a, in the 11 years that your company has been established and been around, you've kind of managed all those different kinds of experiences, mm -hmm. hiring lots of people, having to deal with changes in the economy as well. Um, what would you say are some of the, well, you grew so fast, was that challenging mm -hmm. to manage that? How did you do that? Actually, you know, we were growing a lot faster and then mm -hmm. had to kind of throttle back a bit there. Mm -hmm. uh, can't outrun your cash. Mm -hmm. And that would be easily could have been done if we just kept growing and not thinking about the holistically running a company and all the moving parts that come with it. Mm -hmm. So as we grew, I, I had to make sure that we had the necessary finances to, to continue the growth along the way. Mm -hmm. And that uh, line of credit we got with the bank gave us an opportunity to expand our horizons. And with the government contracting met met methodology, it's, it's about, the, we call it the, the lag pay system. Mm -hmm. so it takes a little while for the government to pay you, so you better have some cash reserves there while the government eventually pays you along. The government's going to pay you. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of when, you know, it takes a little while. You have to invoice the government 30 mm -hmm. days later, and then the government may pay, pay you anywhere from 10 to 60 days later. So you have to have that little buffer, about 90 mm -hmm. days of cash reserves to continue your growth. So you have to have that capacity in order to get those contracts and then perform on the contracts mm -hmm. and then still have a little bit of time yes. before the the payout mm -hmm. comes back to yes, you as well. Yes, and even well. with the growth, you, um, besides the cash, is you got to have the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So the infrastructure can't get ahead of the growth. 
because then then uh, you're paying out too much. Uh -huh. um, so it, it's that's a lag system too. As you grow, um, your infrastructure is playing catch up many times. Mm -hmm. So if you get too far, that 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 gets too far ahead of you, then you have issues and challenges mm -hmm. as well. Did you have to really keep a keen eye on everything that was going on in your business during those times? I mean, I think you mm -hmm. probably still do. No, yeah, no, no difference than I was in the military as when I was a commander. Mm -hmm. As you, you got to keep it, pay attention to all the moving parts. And as a president or CEO, I think the three critical elements that you have to do is you got to pay attention to your operations. Mm -hmm. You got to perform. You got to be on time, on budget, meet and exceed your customer's expectation. Mm -hmm. um, you got to keep your the financially healthy of your organization. So pay attention to that. Not only your profits but on how you're running your business and, and, and spending wisely and being prudent about what you spend to grow your company. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is you have to grow your company because if you're not growing it, and, and, and there's a little saying you call it, mm -hmm. you're not growing, you're dying. You're not growing, mm -hmm. you're dying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you have had, you've had good luck in bringing in people on board. Do you find, mm -hmm. um, have any issues or trouble finding employees here in Hawaii? Initially, it's, you know, it's all about word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody's going to give you a recommendation, um, they're, they're putting their name uh, mm -hmm. on the line. So it was easy to find people at the beginning. But as we grew and uh, grew the capacity of word of mouth, mm -hmm. then we had to use processes, right? Resumes, um, uh, companies to come in and, and recruit for us. And that, mm -hmm. that changed the landscape quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So we have always used a, a process called Kinaoli. Mm -hmm. you know, it's the name of our foundation as well. It's about doing the right thing with the right person at the right time for the right reason and the right value the first time. Mm -hmm. So when we do that, we, we have a tendency of finding that right person with the right value. There's a tendency, uh, many times when I speak in the mainland at conferences, people mm -hmm. talk about the best and the brightest. Mm -hmm. And I totally disagree with that. I think it's about that right person mm -hmm. at the right time for the right position. Because you can have a brilliant person that doesn't fit the climate or the uh, construct of your organization and can be actually cancerous towards your organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's mm -hmm. a, a rare insight mm -hmm. that most of the time mm -hmm. we are looking for the best mm -hmm. and the brightest. But you do really need that whole package, it's don't you It's a team think? effort. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to mm -hmm. have everybody that fits uh, all the different um, puzzles and mm -hmm. go in the right place. Yeah, mm -hmm. so somebody who is... Um, extremely talented and forward thinking and everything can really be toxic to an organization. So that's mm -hmm. one of the toughest decisions in managing people, I think. Yes, so you, got, you know. got to pick that right person the first time because it is, and, and spend a little bit of time doing that. And don't rush through the process of, mm -hmm. of, of hiring someone uh, because otherwise you're going to have to redo it again and it gets painful trying to do it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess with mm -hmm. over 200 employees, mm -hmm. you've kind of worked through that that system mm -hmm. a bit, huh? Yes. <laughs> and so some of the other things that you've expanded, because now, as you've said earlier, you've gone, gone from a relatively small business working in IT to a number of different areas. Um, and it took, probably took some time to be recognized or, or get that experience and gain those specialties. But how did you go about that? Or did that mm -hmm. just kind of happen organically? Um, like I mentioned, we, we started off with IT and emergency management, but as we continue to grow and bring in new employees, we found out some of the employees had different skill sets. Mm -hmm. And because of those skill sets, we started expanding and diversifying the business a little bit more. Uh -huh. It's a philosophy that we had was that if you're too niche, um, then you could put yourself into an area where if that niche goes away, you go away. Mm -hmm. So we diversified the company. We diversified our clients um, that we were going after. So we did work with the, the federal government, um, Department of State, Homeland Security, DOD. Mm -hmm. And then we also did city and county um, of Honolulu and all the counties in, in the state doing state work, doing some commercial work. so that. So when one area may not be as uh, profitable or as uh, prevalent as mm -hmm. and another one might be, so it created some really good balance for the organization and it allowed mm -hmm. us to continue to grow and then pick up some past performance and skills in one area that we may not have in another. Okay. Well, I think we want to ask mm -hmm. a little bit more about that. I think we're going to go to a break mm -hmm. right now, but we want to talk a little bit more about some of the different certifications you have and how you have used those to help your business as well. So stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I am a new host for the show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to get the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests in the military, business, political, nonprofit world. So no matter what background you're from, we have something for you. Please join us every other Thursday at 10 a.m. at thinktechhawaii.com or on theartofthinkingsmart.com. I look forward to seeing you. Aloha everyone, I'm Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show Viva Hawaii every other Monday at 3 p.m. Um, we are here to show you news, issues and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha everybody, my name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program Law Across the Sea on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Well, we're going to continue our conversation with Ray Jardine, uh, our Small Business Person of the Year for the state of Hawaii, and a great example of how to grow your business and really look at the cultural values and really know what your core business is and how to, t how to really move that forward and uh, make a difference. Because obviously, with the number of employees you have, building an office culture uh, and keeping them focused is a big, big task. And we were talking a little bit about your Kina Ole spirit and that everybody in the office does kind of embrace these values. Can you tell us a little bit more mm -hmm. about how you kind of have been able to use that to galvanize your workforce? Mm -hmm. um, two things in that area, you know, our mission uh, mm -hmm. statement that we have and then our cultural statement that we have. So our mission statement is to be a trusted partner, earning customer loyalty while um, creating profitability for our employees, we call it ohana, and mm -hmm. the family, and then enriching our community. So those four pillars, right, our customer, our partners, our employees, and the community is what we're made up of. Mm -hmm. That's the construct of what we, and then the values of that is the kinoli spirit where we apply, you know, um, doing the right thing at the right time to, mm -hmm. to put it all together and synchronize the company's mm -hmm. um, goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example of how that works with, with your mm -hmm. staff and, and how, you're, how you are seen in the community? Uh, from the staff, and I'll give an example, is that um, we may, might be in a meeting and everybody has different opinions and maybe the discussion gets a little bit uh, off track or a little heated mm -hmm. um, uh, on one perspective versus another perspective. And I would just point to the sign right mm -hmm. there in, in the conference room. It says, this is how we do business. This is what we're about. Mm -hmm. So we go back to our core values. Mm -hmm. I think we can come up with the right solution. And mm -hmm. we usually do because mm -hmm. of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds really good mm -hmm. because I'm sure that with a lot of people, you mentioned their skills and um, their experience mm -hmm. and being in so many different areas because now it's IT, it's national security, it's cybersecurity, it's... Um, facilities management it's you know you've got you could probably roll three or four more off i know your capability statement online lists a long 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 mm -hmm. long list of different NAICS codes uh, that you can perform under so um how does all that work um a lot of too is you know, because of the 8a program mm -hmm. it allows us to go after direct awards and do what's called we call it uh unsolicited proposals mm -hmm. and an example would be there was a range operations out of Fort Sill, Oklahoma. It was a bombing range for the, the Air Force mm -hmm. and we approached them to say that we had some of the skill sets we thought we could do the work and actually the command was out in Texas at the Fort uh, in Dallas area. So we went down there and talked to the command, talked to the contracting people and as we were able to actually convince them with our past experiences, mm -hmm. not necessarily our past performance as a company, because we didn't have one uh, mm -hmm. as a doing range operations at that time, but they made them feel comfortable enough that with our past experiences, being in the military, doing things of that nature, the command actually felt comfortable enough to say, I think these are the people we want. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that we, um, they've said the right things that they're going to perform. And I, I've done this with um, another customer once, and I said, we don't necessarily do everything right. Mm -hmm. And it gets their attention you know, because mm -hmm. they get a little apprehensive. Mm -hmm. But then I caveat that it says, but when we do make mistakes. Um, we don't make the same mistakes. We don't make mm -hmm. catastrophic mistakes. But there's no company that can tell you that they, they're, they're, they don't make mistakes because if they are, they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that we're pretty honest, we're straightforward, and we're going to do our best 
If we do make a mistake, we fix it quickly, we get, uh, get it done, and we don't make the same ones. And those, those honest approaches um, to the customer, I think that radi radiates a lot more than if you're giving them just a standard pitch line, how great we are. Mm -hmm. And in reality, then everybody's great, and that's not true. Mm -hmm. So the key is, anytime you do a contract, things may go wrong, and what's your ability to fix it mm -hmm. before it gets worse or to anticipate some of the, the, the shortcomings? And mm -hmm. that's been real helpful for us as we've gone after contracts. Mm -hmm. So being accountable and being mm -hmm. willing to remedy uh, situations mm -hmm. should they mm -hmm. get a little off course. Yeah, you don't be 11 years in this business and something did not go wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that would be, as you said, somebody's not being entirely truthful yes. if they're telling you that's the situation. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned relationships and talking with people uh, um, uh, in business about doing business with them and why they should rely on you. How important have relationships been in building your business? Well, that's how we got started. You know, mm -hmm. Relationships is the, the most critical element of getting in the door. Mm -hmm. um, even when we started the company, I went golfing with uh, Ron Megita, who at that time mm -hmm. was the chairman of uh, Central Pacific Bank. A great SBA and, and actually it was at Citibank and then they merged together. Mm -hmm. And so I told him I was going to start this business, and he said, okay, you know, I'll give you your first loan. I'll give you a $150,000 line of credit. You know, it's, I, I think you'll be successful, Ray. So, you know, through uh -huh. the chairman, the president, <laughs> we, we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. I said, well, thank you. And uh, he says, but, you know, when you want more money from me, and from the bank, he says, put your house up. Mm -hmm. uh, so I chuckled a little and said, you're, you're joking, right? And he goes, no, I'm not. He says, uh, the bank is not an at-risk organization. Our job is to look for people that are going to be successful mm -hmm. and give them opportunities so they can be successful, but we want you to have some um, skin in the game. Mm -hmm. So no skin in the game, nothing out of me. Uh -huh. He says, so put some skin in the game and we can continue this conversation. So since then, you know, after more and more lines of credit as we grew, uh, understood what he was trying to say is that you, you've got to show, if you've got skin in the game, you're, you're in. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody else is um, forking the bill, you, maybe you're not quite as in as you should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not as, as committed mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the idea mm -hmm. and the concept that you're mm -hmm. putting forward. Mm -hmm. So, um, But I'm sure since that time, you've, you've grown a lot, and uh, uh, both in your financial relationships as well. Mm -hmm. So you probably, Ron has been a great friend and, are, and mm -hmm. helped move your business forward, but you've kind of mm -hmm. moved moved into a kind of a different area in terms of your financial capacity as well. Yes, and we no longer have to put my house up so where the company <laughs> can stand on its own, where, mm -hmm. uh, the way we um, don't have to creditize my, my house anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes it a little mm -hmm. easier to, to get home and get to sleep at night. And, yeah, it reduces you know, so the stress. You, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's great. You know. So our, uh, the SBA designations, those service-disabled veterans, the, the 8A, um, those really supported the growth in your company and opened doors for you? I, I would say yes uh, for the most part. It's good to have all these designations. Um, you know, the federal marketplace has all these preferred programs for hub zone, 8A, mm -hmm. women-owned, disabled veteran programs. And to have these additional identifiers has made it helpful. Um, now, we have never won a disabled veteran uh, set-aside contract, uh -huh. <laughs> um, but it's a good designation to have because it, it brings us into where the government gets to use that as a criteria. Mm -hmm. um, the ADA, I use it sparingly. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that to be so our main focus. Mm -hmm because there's a tendency actually when you come off the 8A program, if that's all you've done, your company don't have the, the foundation actually uh -huh. to continue on. So business mm -hmm. size went after full and open contracts, so we had a more diverse portfolio and not just focus just on the 8A program, right. where like I mentioned, a lot of companies after they come off of it had failed because they didn't transition well. Mm -hmm. They haven't mm -hmm. really marketed themselves mm -hmm. across the board to a lot of different opportunities. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you've diversified pretty well mm -hmm. with state, city, county, and then different mm -hmm. federal agencies as well. You're in an enviable position right now mm -hmm. with a well-run company that's pretty successful, very successful, I'd say, and has even outgrown many of those size mm -hmm. standards. So for the little guy, you're a pretty big business right now. What does that allow you to do? What else are, are you mm -hmm. interested or maybe involved with now? Well, what we're doing now is actually starting an NHO, that Native Hawaiian organization mm -hmm. under the Native 8A program. Um, acquiring two to three more companies to fall under that, that, that organizational structure. Mm -hmm. And 
we're talking to some other NHOs about um, creating uh, a strategic partnership mm -hmm. so that we can grow as a collective entity, that we can actually partner with each other on, on opportunities. Uh, it's a great program yes. to give yeah. uh, Native people. Uh, in that program alone, we have to, some of our profits have to go back into mm -hmm. the community efforts. So it goes beyond just being the business and about profits that you put in your pocket, but it's about um, giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and particularly to um, foster economic growth mm -hmm. and uh, economic development in the Native Hawaiian community. It's a great tool. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a great tool because when you talk to a potential client or a customer or a contracting officer, we lead with the fact that we give first. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the term that I, I used on Saturday about uh -huh. you give, you get, you mm -hmm. get, you give. Mm -hmm. And that philosophy actually is that they, they look at that, that you're not just about trying to make money, but you're trying to make a difference, not only for the customer, but for your community. Mm -hmm. it, it sells really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you have an event coming up that you've worked on that's very mm -hmm. dear to you that kind of merges your experience as a uh, veteran with your native heritage. You want to mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, we, um, you know, with our foundation, you know, we, we do a, what's called Gap Kid programs to help um, uh, youth programs as well as veteran programs. So mm -hmm. one of our veteran programs is called the Nakoa Wounded Warrior Outrigger Canoe Race. Mm -hmm. um, about five, six years ago, we got involved in this program. And it was pretty small at that time, maybe six or seven Outrigger canoes uh, racing. And today, in fact, this weekend will be our, uh, the regatta. Mm -hmm. And it starts off on Thursday with a reception and then on Friday, we have a wounded warrior uh, job fair um, for mm -hmm. veterans that are looking for jobs. And then Saturday kicks off the Duke Hanamoko Fest with, with the Wounded Warrior Outrigger Race. And this year, we have over 600 paddlers participating in um, four divisions. We have a veterans division, combat veterans, uh, wounded warrior, and gold star family division. So it, it has grown to be a a huge logistic nightmare uh, <laughs> that we never thought it would get this, uh -huh, big. this big, but it's, 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 it's a great cause. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sounds like a wonderful mm -hmm. experience and a great way. Do you, mm -hmm. is there a place for spectators to come down or um, mm -hmm. other yes, people um, to? About last year, about 1,500 people were mm -hmm. on the beach watching the event. And it's always more exciting when it's a close race, when it's like when it's a runaway, you don't hear a lot of cheering mm -hmm. going on. But when it's a close, you hear everybody yelling and screaming and getting mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. So a good family activity mm -hmm. out on the beach and uh, supporting And there'll be the Marine veterans. Corps band performing, playing music as well. Quite a festive date. So what time does it all start? It sounds like mm -hmm. it's the place mm -hmm. to be. Uh, it starts at 8 o'clock, um, the blessing begins mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock. Um, some opening ceremony from our congressional delegation. And then um, at 0900, we uh, hit the beach okay. and we start performing. Terrific. Uh, thanks for doing that for the Thank veterans, you. and best of luck. Have a, we may, be, ha, may we have great weather. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being with us. We'll see thank you, you next time. Thanks very much.